Hello, everybody, and welcome. Uh, thank you for joining us, and thank you for your interest in Cranfield MBA. Uh, my name is Dr. Leila Lingen. I'm an associate professor here at Cranfield and um, director of full-time MBA, and really pleased to be with you today and excited to be kind of talking to you about our redesigned um, transformation um, MBA program. Um, so before we kind of start uh, talking about the MBA program, I thought uh, it might be useful to tell you a little bit about the history of Cranfield and what a, a unique place it actually is. Um, and then we're going kind to of be talking about the, the MBA. Um, so we're in fact a specialist postgraduate university. Um, this means that we have a smaller, more specialized, mature audience than perhaps the uh, majority of universities. And this, this really gives us focus. Um, as a university, Cranfield's mission has been um, always a little bit different from, you know, traditional universities, and perhaps this can be kind of traced back to the history of how it all began. Uh, Cranfield was established in 1946 as a um, college of aeronautics um, at the end of the Second World War, and it was set up to bring people uh, who had military experience back into the workplace and kind of prepare them for the peacetime economy. Um, so the university was really set up to solve a problem. So problem solving, addressing a need is really in our DNA, which really set us apart from, I suppose, more traditional um, universities. So we emerged as a college of aeronautics that developed engineers and soon realized that they really needed leadership and management skills. And that's when our MBA was born. So we have one of the longest running MBA programs um, in the UK. Uh, the program is over 55 years old and it's one of our flagship programs um, and it has a really sort of rich um, heritage um, and, and foundation. Um, so I want to sort of talk to you a little bit about the MBA program structure. I hope that you can all see my screen um, and give you a bit of background into some of the, the kind of the unique features of um, of, of Cranfield um, and uh, School of Management, but also the, the MBA program. Um, so we're immensely proud to hold uh, triple accreditations from AACSB, AMBAR and EQUIS. Um, for those of you who wonder what that may mean, that would put us in the top 1% of business schools globally. Um, and also we recently, uh, because in recognition of our wide range of support for small businesses and entrepreneurship provision, we achieved a small business charter um, and joined 60 other uh, business schools who actually hold the awards across um, across the UK. Um, so our Cranfield MBA, full-time MBA, is known as the Transformation MBA. And what really excites me as um, kind of the most about leading the MBA at Cranfield is really this sort of amazing and I would say genuine passion that, um, that the entire community has for the programme. You know, our students, our faculty who are teaching on the program, and I suppose most importantly, the alumni community. We have one of the largest alumni community uh, among any ranked schools, and they genuinely care about the future of the program and really keen to work with us to sort of to make sure that we maintain the program traditions, but also um, kind of keep it exciting for, for future generations. Um, transformation has been always at the heart of the MBA program. Uh, it's the most common word that we hear from our alumni when they kind of describe their MBA experience. Um, and I suppose it's because we really focus on the journey and not just the destination at Cranfield. Um, you know, we believe that the journey that actually helps the, to bring the change in you, the journey that transforms your mindset, your outlook, your knowledge, your leadership, um, it's the journey that actually leads you to your, uh, to your dream. And career transformation just, just happens. So that focus on individuals that focus on the process is something that I suppose um, sets, um, sets Cranfield apart. Um, Cranfield MBA has a strong track record of excellence. As you can see on the table, the program has been consistently ranked among um, top global MBA programs by the Financial Times, um, QS and The Economist. And I think the ranking is really special to us because they, they highlight and reward some of the unique aspects that we've been passionately working on. And they really kind of um, reflect our ethos and, and values. So we ranked number one um, in the UK, for example, for sector diversity. This is about the background of the people in the classroom, um, seventh in the world for the percentage of female um, in the cohort, uh, top 25 for internationality. And I think all of that kind of means a, a rich debate and cultural experience um, in, in the classroom. Uh, very proud of our um, recent ranking on the Bloomberg that kind of ranks us first in Europe for the quality of teaching and learning. Um, again, 
sort of celebrates the unique um, Cranfield's approach to teaching and learning, but also first in Europe for entrepreneurship. Um, also the value for money, that's a testament for the focus on the process that will really generate um, outcome. Um, I just wanted to also highlight that the Cranfield MBA is a Chartered Management Institute, CMI dual accreditation degree. Um, those of you who are not familiar with the CMI, CMI is the only chartered professional body in the UK that's dedicated to promoting a high standards in management lead and leadership excellence. Um, and this professional qualification alongside your Cranfield MBA degree will really give you um, a kind of a career, um, career advantage. Brilliant. Um, so at Cranfield School of Management, we also believe in transforming ourselves and kind of continually listening to the market to understand the need of our audience. And I've been fortunate to kind of be working on a really exciting redesign project over the last 12 months um, to kind of further enrich our MBA program and create a more compelling and career outcome focused design that really puts project work, employer learning and international experience at the, fo at the forefront. So I want to give you an overview of the structure of the MBA program and highlight the key features that really set us apart from other MBA programs as um, you kind of doing your research um, on different MBA programs and kind of explain where actually these appear on the, on the program. Um, so our MBA program is delivered in four parts. Um, part one, as you can see on the chart, is a spread over term one and term two, and it lasts for six months and consists of 10 compulsory modules that are designed to provide you with a contemporary understanding of the basic business functions. So we cover five subjects in term one and five core subjects in term two, um, a wide range of topics from accounting and finance, economics, marketing, operations, a strategy, entrepreneurship, um, and also organization behavior and leadership. Um, the focus on sustainability runs through all of our modules, but we also have a dedicated module to um, sustainability called Leading Sustainable Business. Um, the student also begin the business analytics and consulting and career development and enhancement module um, in part one, which run through out term one and term two. Uh, business analytics and consulting includes classes on qualitative and quantitative data analytics uh, before you actually apply this to a real life um, consulting project. Um, the career development and enhancement module is one of the new features of Cranfield MBA. Um, where as part of your MBA credits, we systematically support you to navigate your career, career exploration and development and kind of achieve your post MBA um, aspirations. Um, some of you might be aware one of the biggest challenges is often the lack of a space uh, that MBA students have due to various academic activities and coursework. Um, so this is, this is quite an innovative approach where we kind of embedded career development into the MBA curriculum. Uh, to kind of not only provide you with a structure and support, but also uh, kind of allow time and space um, during the day so that you can sort of advance towards your, your goals. I'm going to be talking more on that module um, in a moment. Um, in part two, um, which is delivered in term three, you gain discretion over your learning. You can choose three modules from a range of elective modules that we offer at Cranfield. Um, the subject that you feel actually are most beneficial to your learning and your future careers. Um, you also conclude the business analytics and career development module in term three. Um, in part three, students complete a, a month-long international experience, which gives you the opportunity to study abroad with a Cranfield Partner Business School, ASCP, to choose a specialization um, delivered by them and complete a live case study, a consultancy uh, project, your second consultancy project. Um, it's a very unique opportunity to spend abroad for, for one month. Um, and ESCP is one of the top ranked schools um, in Europe and in the world. Um, and this is an opportunity that we kind of offer to our entire class um, rather than just a subgroup of um, students. So you complete the course in part four, uh, and this is where you can customize your MBA further uh, to suit your specific career aspirations. Um, you select one of the three distinct career pathways we have executive, entrepreneurial, or independent consulting, where you have an opportunity to complete a full-time internship. If you are on the executive pathway, you can complete an entrepreneurship journey piece uh, to write a business plan or a growth plan for your business um, or undertake an independent consultancy project. 
Brilliant. So I hope that kind of given you a bit of background, a bit of a structure onto the MBA program. So what I want to um, talk to you for the rest of the session is to basically highlight, as I said, the key features on the program that kind of uh, set us apart and sort of help you to understand where actually these features appear on the program uh, before you kind of hear from our uh, our students and, and alum who we have with us today. Um, so we have the focus on problem-based and practice-based learning, career development, international experience, personal and leadership development and um, the alumni community that are, in my view, are the unique features of, um, of Cranfield MBA. So when it comes to sort of practice-based learning, Cranfield has been a pioneer, as I explained earlier, due to the history of how it all began and um, the focus and closeness to practice. So basically everything we do is grounded in practical thinking and, and experience. Solving a problem is really in our DNA. Um, but on the MBA, we offer unique opportunities for you to be able to work on real life projects um, with respected companies throughout the year. So you start this experience by engaging in business analytics and consulting module, um, where you kind of work on a real life consultancy company uh, project. Um, so what we do is to kind of provide you with various project opportunities. So although you have a chance to kind of self-source your own project, but uh, but we have a dedicated team who are actually working really hard with different companies to kind of create different um, different opportunities. Perhaps um, Mario or Mampinde can actually reflect on on their experience of um, consultancy project. You also complete the second consultancy project in Europe at ESCP, and this is a, another chance to kind of learn about kind of going through the cycle of consultancy uh, thinking and developing consulting mindset uh, in a different context, uh, which is quite um, quite different and has its own nuances in terms of uh, the cultural element of working in a different, different country. But generally speaking, the work involves understanding the problem, gathering evidence, most importantly, developing a pragmatic, innovative and achievable solution that we expect you to kind of present back to the client and clients very much part of the evaluation and assessment of, of this work. So we've worked with a variety of organizations in the past, with McDonald's, Calvin Klein, with the NHS, with Baringa Consulting. This year, we have a project from EVI, for example, um, Simplex, so lots of different organizations who are active in the consulting space, but also all sorts of um, different sectors. Um, the other piece I wanted to kind of highlight, which is kind of doesn't sit formally as part of the MBA curriculum, but it's an important part of the MBA experience are actually comp MBA competitions. Um, so we have a dedicated um, MBA competition budget. So we tend to appoint competition reps who work very closely with me and the team to kind of make sure that we have a, a good comprehensive list of all of different competitions in the UK and internationally um, to be sending teams and supporting them to kind of go and represent Cranfield. Um, so you learn a lot um, through participating in competitions because they are focused often on real life problems and you very, you learn very more than an individual modules because to address a real life problem you need to be pulling expertise from a variety of disciplines like marketing, consulting, entrepreneurship, finance and so on. So they're quite quite helpful. We host some of the competitions at Cranfield so we are quite active when it comes to for example venture capital and investment competition known as VCIC where we host the northern european round um student achieved really good results there um and they participated they, they kind of made it to the global rounds um student participated in halt competition i think overall last year we participated in 18 uh, to 20 competitions and student achieved really really good results again the class is super active um this year um in terms of uh, the willingness to engage in in different different competitions, and these are kind of complementary to to your um, basically MBA experience. Um, I talked about the career module. Um, so the focus on career um, development and outcome was really at the heart of the MBA redesign. Um, so we created a comprehensive MBA uh, career development program uh, to kind of provide you with the right structure to kind of navigate the year. I think what's really, really important for me is to kind of for you to be able to use the first few months to systematically reflect on your career vision and career plan to do the research on to different career options, different roles, different industries, different organizations 
reflect on the notion of cultural fit, on your strength, on your weaknesses, where you thrive the most, and put the two together and actually come up with an actual career vision and plan, and then utilize the MBA platform for the rest of the year to be able to kind of progress towards your career plan uh, by a kind of um, understanding how to kind of build and communicate your personal brands, you know, things like writing CVs or cover letters, but also presentation skills and elevator pitch skills, learn how to tell a good story, how to develop narrative building skills or storytelling skills, um, engage with the external world, you know, find your own job hunting strategies, for example, um, understanding the effective job search, developing competencies, interview skills, assessment centers, negotiating a job offer. So we kind of created a comprehensive program uh, for which you actually take 20 credit towards your MBA um, total credit. And that structure has been super effective in my view, in a sense of navigating, uh, supporting a student to kind of navigate those kind of complexities. Um, in addition to that, you've got the three career path phase where you um, complete an internship or an entrepreneurship piece or an independent consulting over the summer. But also we have a whole host of um, networking and exploration um, events where you kind of learn about different sectors, industries or different job roles. We also have a number of one to one um, advisory um, support where you will be meeting with career advisors, with career development managers, internship officers with our um, you know, executive coach. You have eight dedicated sessions with executive coach. Again, uh, Mario or Roman Pinder may want to sort of reflect on their experience of engaging um, with, with, um, with the executive coach. Uh, but also to kind of highlight the internship program, which is quite a popular one. So the majority of students are often on the executive pathway. Um, and we have a dedicated team that actually work closely with me to kind of secure different internship opportunities for Cranfield class. And I think that's something that's kind of set us apart from um, other other schools where you have a chance to apply to internships that are advertised globally. But what's different for us is the kind of um, manage and own the process on your behalf in terms of securing the projects and then advertising them only to the MBA class. I think for me, the process really mirrors the real job, um, the real life process of job applications where you have to learn about an opportunity, apply, um, express your interest, but also go through the process of interview and receiving feedback and seeing the outcome and contemplating offers, which is quite, quite helpful in terms of learning and skill development and basically capacity building and becoming more kind of um, resilient. Fantastic. So. The second piece is the personal and leadership development um, kind of focus at uh, Cranfield. So I think School of Management is well known for personal development. Um, throughout the program, throughout the MBA program, there is a big emphasis on you as an individual. Um, so if you ask any alumni what is it about Cranfield that actually uh, makes it different, I would they would tell you that focus on individual. Um, you constantly kind of encouraged to engage in a self-reflection journey. Um, and the fact that you kind of come out of that journey, so aware of yourself, and not just who you are and what is it that you want to do, but the impact that you make on other people and understanding about your, you and your leadership style is, is really powerful. And I believe that would really, really help you to sort of become an, um, kind of a reflective and effective um, leader in this, um, in this kind of modern work, uh, work place. Um, so we have two dedicated module, organization behavior and leadership develop uh, leadership in action that actually is focused on the development of self, personal effectiveness, your leadership style, but also some of the contemporary topics in leadership and management around managing people and leading change and uh, basically uh, ch challenges uh, for leaders. Um, we also have a series of personal development workshop to kind of support you, especially at the start of the journey to learn how to um, work together, how to become a more effective, reflective practitioner, how to solve conflicts, you know, navigate cultural differences. So these are the kind of the little tips that you really, really need as you engage in real life um, teamwork. Um, um, and, and I think that, th that this is the most effective part of personal development because basically you breathe it and you live it throughout the um, MBA program. 
Um, we also have something um, called Leadership Week that happens towards the end of term two. And it's a week packed full of kind of workshop, events, simulation and role plays. And um, we have a theme every year. This year, we're focusing on leadership in the world of AI, which is quite timely to, to focus on. So we invite external speakers. They talk about the kind of the theme. We also have a role play, um, which is about a press conference, where you have to kind of go head to head with real life journalists and, um, and, and kind of defend your organization um, about a crisis that happened in the eyes of public. So that's also an interesting experience. We have a real studio at Cranfield. So we take you to the studio, you've got journalists in front of you and you have to sort of um, be, be kind of um, sometimes film the session. You can see yourself in action and kind of uh, reflect how you may want, how you would have wanted to sort of do differently if you were to do it again. Um, brilliant. So um, I mentioned the executive coaching as well as part of the career development module, but each person's got a dedicated exec coach that kind of speak with you on eight occasions and um, and actually support you um, in, in the background. Um, excellent. So international experience, again, it was something that I was really passionate about to kind of introduced to the MBA. Um, so we've done this for a number of years, but we wanted to kind of formalize it even more and provide a more kind of extensive international experience to, to our students. Um, so I, we believe that multicultural learning environments really kind of enable you to comprehend new ideas and perceptions better and faster. They make you um, more flexible and compliant to change. Um, really ideal setting to kind of increase your cultural awareness and prepare you for, you know, today's all-inclusive global industry. Um, and I think as a manager, you're much, much better placed to implement a strategy and drive um, the achievement of organizational goals if you have an understanding of different cultural values and norms and, and preferences of the people that you're supposed to be working with. So we partnered with ESCP, um, one of the top schools in, in, in Europe. Um, they have multi-campuses in Paris, Madrid, Berlin, Turin, London, and Varso, and um, they are the oldest business school um, in, in the world. Um, so yeah, I think that's a really good chance for you to kind of experience a new educational environment while you still benefit from the access to the UK job market and the, the kind of UK education system. Um, so we offer three specializations through the partnership with the SCP, um, so in Turin, Italy, we offer fintech and innovation as well as luxury management and design. So you learn about um, international capital market and trading techniques. You learn about financial modeling, digital transformation, the AI and platforms um, and scenario planning under the fintech and, and innovation. Um, and if you're interested in brand management or marketing or luxury sector generally in its broader sense, um, you learn about basically brand management, luxury retail, um, digital marketing for luxury. So it's a, it's, a, it's a good experience to kind of go deep in one of the areas that you may want to sort of um, have, have a passion for. I mean, I think the class this year is going through this kind of exercise of choosing the right electives and the right specialization and the right career pathways. But MBA generally would give you a lot of room for kind of customization. So that process itself, I think, really powerful because you get to reflect on you and what you want, what is it that you want to do and how you can just use um, the um, what you have um, what you have uh, available on the MBA to kind of achieve achieve those um, in Madrid. Um, the Spain campus, we offer consulting a specialization and you learn about the foundations of consulting, the skills you need to get hired, you know, the, the consulting for societal impact and sustainability, which is quite, quite important and trendy and um, in demand in the market, as well as um, economic consulting. Um, so if you have a passion for consulting, Cranfield is the right place for you because you get to do two consultancy projects. You can do consulting a specialization. And uh, for your career pathway, you can either do a consulting as an intern or an independent consultancy project. Um, also to mention that uh, we offer language courses to our students. So you have you will have an opportunity to kind of acquire working knowledge of Italian or Spanish before um, you go uh, abroad for one month. Um, and yeah, the focus is on spoken rather than um, written skills. 
but um, we offer this um, language course so you can kind of hold simple conversations with a business edge and that would that would help a lot the the courses are in english but um i think knowing the kind of the little um bits and pieces can really actually help you to sort of um it actually promotes you know communication and establish contacts in the generally international um, environments uh, fantastic. And the final piece I wanted to kind of highlight um, is this amazing, I think, and impactful community of alumni that Cranfield has. I think it's partly because we were one of the first who um, offered the MBA. So as a result of that, we have a large alumni community. We have the largest among any um, other ranked schools. Um, but also, I wanted to kind of talk to you a little bit about the mechanisms that are available to you to be able to connect to this amazing um, community. Um, for example, we have the MBA speaker series. We launched it last October, and this gives students a chance to kind of hear from a diverse group of thought leaders from across industries, government and academia. So we had several speakers from um, JP Morgan, from MasterCard, from... Um, this year we have from Amazon, um, PwC, AT Kearney. So we have a number of speakers um, throughout the year that uh, come to Cranfield and talk about their career journey and their experience. And there is something special about the MBA, um, Cranfield MBA alumni community. They very much focus on, on individual, the journey that they've taken and very sort of passionately and I think generously share um, their, their insights and advice with the, with the MBA community. Um, I sometimes organize MBA alumni workshops and that's where we invite one of the alumni to come and run a longer session, which is more interactive and um, kind of take you through a few cases and exercises. So we had one interesting one last year where one of the alum came to Cranfield and took people through a week in his life where he had to kind of manage a very delicate uh, bribery case. Um, and that was a that was an interesting way of getting connected to the alumni and learn about a, their in their life or a, a week in their life and how things kind of um, unfolded. Um, MBA students uh, get an a special invite to the alumni pop night. So the first Tuesday of every month, we gather in a pub in London near Blackfriars and MBA students are also invited to that. That's a chance to kind of get to know the alumni and build relationships. We have a scheme called Executive in Residence, where we invite some of the top senior alumni um, to Cranfield, uh, and then you get an hour to speak with them uh, and learn about their experience and 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 also the kind of the career the career journey. But yeah, so I'm sure we can talk more about um, all all of these. But I just wanted to kind of highlight some of the kind of mechanisms or platforms, if you like that you can use to connect to the alumni community throughout um, your, your year at, um, at Cranfield. Fantastic. So I'd like to sort of invite my colleague, Helen, um, to tell you a little bit about the scholarships that we have available on the MBA. Um, we understand that they're important to you. Um, and we wanted to kind of talk to you a little bit about the different types of scholarships that we, that we have and, and a little bit about the process. Right. Thanks, Leila. So, yes, we have a range of scholarships available that recognise various traits such as academic excellence, professional distinction, inspiring leadership, inspiring diversity. We have quite a few women focused scholarships and then we're lucky to have some that have been funded by our alumni community as well. And as part of those scholarships, you will get the opportunity to meet with uh, the alumni that funded your scholarship as well. So scholarships really range from 20% through to 75%. And the best chance of being awarded a scholarship really is an early application. So we have two uh, deadlines coming up. The first one is this week, so 30th of November. So if you have your application pretty much ready to submit, I would urge you to do that as soon as possible. The next one after this week is the 18th of January. Uh, so definitely an early application if you're looking for a scholarship. Um, the process for applying for a scholarship, once you've submitted your application and you have been selected for interview, we'll send you a separate application form. 
to apply for a scholarship. And we encourage you to have a look at our scholarships online, uh, select one that you think is most applicable, and then submit an application for that. And there are three short essays that you need to complete um, around why you think you're the best recipient for that scholarship, what your footprint will be on the program. So what impact will you have while you're here? And then we'll, what contribution you'll make to the alumni community after your MBA. So once you've submitted your application, you've had your interview and been made an offer on the program, we're pleased to be able to offer an extra 5% discount on top of the, any scholarship for candidates who accept their place and complete their admissions by the 28th of March. So that's an extra bonus there. If you're not sure about which scholarship to apply for, then please do book a consultation with us and we can talk through your profile and your application and then advise you as to which scholarship to apply for. But definitely apply early. That's the key. Thank you, Leila. Brilliant. Thanks so much, Helen. And um, of course, if you have any, any questions about the scholarship, more than happy um, to help, please keep your questions coming. Um, so I'd like to invite uh, our wonderful student, current student Mario and alumna Mampinder um, to join me and talk to you guys about their experience that they've been having on the MBA. I think Mario, you've been um, onto the program for, for two months, yeah, nearly two months now. Um, yeah. yeah, the stage is yours, please. Please talk to the, our prospects about your experience and why Cranfield. Thank you very much, Leila. Uh, well, hello, everyone. Nice to meet you. Uh, uh, well, uh, that's good that you're like uh, connecting here with us today. Uh, well, as Leila was telling, uh, I'm the current uh, MBA student of this uh, cohort. I'm from Mexico, and I joined. Uh, we started this, uh, these classes uh, in September, late September. Uh, well, about about my experience so far, uh, I think it's like uh, Leila was mentioning on the program, really transformational journey. Uh, I would I, I would say actually transformation since day one. I was like so uh, in self uh, self you uh, not thinking, you know. Like, actually, in my interview was like quite funny that I mentioned probably Leila like twice. Like I was looking get out of my comfort zone. About getting out of my comfort zone since day one has been like really like uh, the day to day basis on this uh, on this journey. But I feel really, really happy. I mean, as Leila was mentioning the program, well, I, what I really uh, was like grabbed my attention from uh, Cranfield MBA uh, was basically all this uh, amazing program that the university offer you, uh, all these modules that, uh, well, uh, really enhance your career, like uh, keep you mm -hmm. thinking out of the box. Uh, I will say on my personal, also my personal experience, like the help also like the team provide you. Uh, Helen and Pamela also, I had a really good like support from their side. Uh, and all my interview with Leila was like so, uh, so interesting. Uh, I mean, getting to know more about the, the, the structure of the program, the overview of the program, the international experience. And I think something really, really important from my personal opinion is this career development model. Uh, for me, it's something that is like, uh, was so, so interesting on my point of view. Uh, as Leila was mentioning, I mean, some other universities really obviously focus on the outcome, but really focusing on the journey and what are you doing in between is something that really interesting. I mean, at the end, it's uh, for me, in my, in, my, in my opinion, I was working back in Mexico, like for uh, the last seven years in consumer goods. So when I, when I was about to take the decision, you know, like to move in a road to start, to start my journey and this MBA process, I, was, I, I wanted to make sure that I wanted to do like the best decision in terms of like, uh, uh, I was like, uh, going to study, I want to go like uh, to a place that they will really uh, like potential my career in terms like uh, moving more towards like a more managerial roles, uh, le getting to le learn learn uh, more you know about the class. I think one question that I saw over there like about the nationalities uh, in our current class, we are almost like ten nationalities uh, working like every day in real cases scenarios like uh, really. Um, this like uh, experience, as you know, like uh, de developing your leadership style, uh, career uh, career models, uh, like uh, teamwork. Uh, so it's so interesting. I mean, all this program that uh, Cranfield offer you. So it's a really really valuable experience. Uh, that that for these two months I have really experienced, and I'm so so happy for that. 
Excellent. Thanks so much, Mario. Um, Thank you very much, Leila. Ma'am Pinder. Hello. Hello, everyone. Ah, uh, well, first of all, all the best for starting your journeys to the applications. I would definitely like to share my experience. Uh, so just to give an introduction, so I was working in marketing for seven years before I planned to have an MBA. So I finished my MBA uh, this September, officially October. And in October, I was able to get my first offer, a job offer. And this month from 1st of November, I've started working with Halion, the company for GSK. So into marketing, but comparing it's a very leadership role. And that was exactly what I was looking for through the MBA. Uh, sharing my uh, motivation to do an MBA was that I really wanted to build up my skill set on leadership. Earlier, it was core marketing on the managerial positions, but not that much on the decision making. So that was why one motivation of uh, going for the MBA and Cranfield is the best, definitely, if you want to focus on leadership and personal development. Uh, the second reason for Cranfield MBA for me was uh, because of the alumni relationships. Uh, when you're coming to UK, it's really important. You, ha you have your network, a very broad network, who's going to help you guide in your career, what's going to do. And you connect with the alumni. We have pub nights, as Lala mentioned. We have alumni I portal who are always there to help so that was really helpful for me um if I talk about my personal transformation in MBA I mean it was like amazing something that you cannot imagine I just give an example how this transformation helps and how it happens actually because when we read transformation you might think like how is it going to happen I'll tell my personal story how it happens with me so um in Cranfield MBA, uh, we usually work in the learning teams. So basically, most of the assignments and the projects you'll be working on could be competitions, consulting projects. It, it's going to be mostly in the teams of five to six. And the teams are usually made in a sense that they are very diverse in terms of the experiences people are coming from, uh, the countries they're coming from, very diverse. For my, um, for my learning team, we had people from finance, engineering, marketing, innovation, operations, all, and very different companies. And when you start working in the project, it's a very new experience because earlier in your jobs, you might be working in a hierarchy. So for example, if you're a manager, so you, you're going to follow a what director is going to say and you're going to tell your teammates exactly what to do so you never get to explore yourself but in the learning teams uh in my mba so what was happening there's no clear leader so it was all about how you react how you explore yourself so how are you able to manage the con team conflicts because officially it's not your responsibility how are you able to manage the conflicts how are you able to lead the team how are you managing difficult people who are maybe more rigid, or if you are rigid, how are you handling people? How, how are people handling you? So a very, very different experience on exploring yourself, your personality. And on the top of that, you have executive coach. For me, it was really helpful because, for example, sometimes you're not able to maybe manage the conflicts or maybe you don't understand what's happening. So they're there to help reflect on yourself coach, uh, guide on your personalities, how are you going to develop? And on top of that, you also have the modules like or, uh, organizational behavior, leadership modules, uh, where you have your personal reflections, like what type of personality you are, what kind of person you are. And by the end of the MBA, you will understand a lot of things about yourself. And definitely for me, it has made me a better decision maker. I, I, I never knew I, I had so much of innovation, uh, that kind of qualities in me. And I got to realize by the end of the year. So amazing for me. And uh, second was, I think there was a question in the chat itself. Uh, if we can get internships into the different uh, industries or roles, definitely I was able to secure one in uh, Syngenta with a pro you know, into a product development, which was very different from my experience. So yes, definitely possible. Um, another reason for my uh, Cranfield MBA was uh, the international experience and the real life projects, apart from learning in the classrooms. For me, what was really helpful was the consulting projects. We worked with the real companies, like the global companies. We went to the companies, um, got all the data. We worked on them, made the decisions for the company, presented it to them. So it, in a kind, we were interacting with the real world around us. So that really helped to see the world, see different kind of challenges, explore ourselves, 
So another was uh, again, in, uh, we went to the Uruguay. I went, I, I chose Uruguay, but my classmates went to Greece. So there also we worked on the consulting projects. For me, I worked on a construction company um, on how to expand their markets. So a lot of opportunities. It's gonna be you will be in the classroom learning the modules, but you'll also be connected with the industry all the time. I think, yeah, that that was the best part about my transformation in MBA. Brilliant. Thank you, Ma'am Pinda. Um, so we have a we have a few questions in the chat. Um, I read them, but in the meantime, if anyone would want to kind of come off mute, uh, please do so. We be more than happy to um to answer any questions that you may have. I think one question from Nick about whether we can it would be possible to undertake the career pathway in an employer organization. So absolutely yes. Um, so I think, in fact, this is something that we encourage people who are actually working at the minute and don't want to change their employer to kind of think about how they might be able to uh, create a nine month sabbatical, because um, from late June, you will be free to start a full time uh, internship. And if you're already working in an organization, uh, we can thinking of um, be thinking of potentially rotation, uh, you working in a different group or shadowing a senior person or, you know, kind of identifying something for you to sort of benefit from that experience. Um, if you want to do an independent consultancy piece, that's also possible. Um, so the way that internships or project uh, the career project works is that you can always self-source your own opportunity. So if you have a specific company or um, country in mind, uh, you can secure the opportunity yourself and then we put in place certain uh, contracts and sort of legal structure to make sure that we can frame it as part of your MBA education, which is the internship module, for example. Uh, but also in, in, in parallel, as I said, we have a dedicated team who's kind of working and kind of talking to you, learn, learn about your interest, uh, the types of organization or sectors that you may want to go on to. And then based on that, we kind of uh, work with different contacts, the, the network that we have at Cranfield, the alumni network and, and, and secure different, different opportunities that we advertise um, throughout the year. So I hope that answered your question, Nick. Uh, Perfect. And uh, we have a question about the class demographic. I think Ma'am Pinder and Mario, they, um, they touched on this. Um, so I think on Cranfield, the, the average uh, student age is around 32. Um, so typically they have around eight, nine years of experience. Um, so I think we would like to have a relatively senior class because, you know, as much as you learn from the faculty on the MBA, you learn from each other. So MBA is a very special course where there is a huge amount of peer learning going on. And I think that's why it's very, very important for us to have a class, um, you know, people from different backgrounds. So there are some schools who are kind of focusing on a specific sector in terms of um, kind, of, kind of maximizing the outcome, for example, recruiting from financial services and then pass people on to financial services or consulting. Uh, but we have num we are ranked number one in the UK uh, on the Financial Times for the diversity of sectors because really, really believe you would learn a huge deal if you have people from social sector next to you, consulting, financial services, engineering, for example. We have people from healthcare, energy, um, as I said, NGO, social impact. So I think the diversity of sector is really, really important. Um, this year, we have six, uh, 15 nationalities in class, uh, people from Latin America, Mexico, Japan, Indonesia, Bangladesh, Saudi Arabia, America, Germany, Romania, um, Iran, Iraq. So we have a quite a diverse class. Again, from that point of view, as Mampinda said, when we put you in different learning teams, there is a huge amount of learning around navigating kind of cultural differences and understanding different kind of norms um, and, and, and so on. So um, I hope again, that gave you a bit of background into the class uh, demographic and, and, and experience. Fantastic. Um, Claire, do we have any other questions in the chat? We have some specific questions about um, application and I can put an application guide into the chat as well. Um, and another one about GMAT. 
about um, one second. Let me find it. Um, so it's one one candidate is saying I am keen on pursuing MBA from the University of Cranfield. Um, is it necessary to to um, sorry? Is it necessary to do the GMAT test? And that would be uh, because that would be quite challenging to fit that in as well. Is that something that we have to do? Helen. Well, Pamela, do you want to take that on? Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll answer that one. It's not necessary at the point of application. We will review your application um, and then discuss it at admissions board. Um, hopefully invite you for interview and the admissions board will decide if the offer will be conditional upon taking GMAT. There is the option of taking our tests instead of GMAT, which are the preparation is less onerous. Uh, than GMAT, so there is that option as well. But I would encourage people to submit their application in the first instance, and then the admissions board would decide. Brilliant, thank you, Helen. Um, I have a question about um... So there's a question in just that in the chat whether they can submit application without GMAT. Um, so yes. So we consider on a case by case basis. So yeah, we encourage you to submit your applications and then we engage the team will engage with you and uh, and discuss um, the GMAT requirements. Um, I have a question about the some of the qualities that we see in successful students in the MBA program. Um, perhaps um, I'll, I'll ask Mario Mampinder to sort of reflect on this as well. But I suppose from my point of view, uh, we really want people who have big passion and big dreams, right? So that that will to 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 succeed, that desire and fire in in you that wouldn't settle until you sort of achieve what you want to achieve. I think that's the kind of um, the kind of the biggest and most important starting point. Um, the other thing I look at in the application is the clarity of vision, um, you know, the ability to see the big picture, you know, wood from trees um, and be able to successfully implement, um, which which is practically basically possible. Um, I think um, we would want you to have some flexibility during the first few months to kind of discover and explore yourself and learn about the passions that you might not, never knew that you had, but also, um, learn that at some point you've got to sort of start taking a sharp focus and kind of painting your dream to be able to take the right steps because I think MBA as a degree if I'm honest with you is not going to do the job what you do with the opportunities that are actually available to you around the MBA is something that would make the difference so we want you to sort of have that clarity of vision to be able to utilize the opportunities that are around you um, to to achieve to achieve your goals um, so we want to see in the application people who kind of have had the experience um, to tackle, you know, ch changing situations, kind of the flexibility, the ability to handle ambiguity. So if you can kind of share that with us um, in an interview um, or, or in the application, uh, that would be um, that would be very helpful. And, and also the determination and kind of the toughness, as I said, the grit. Um, in both kind of smooth times, but also when the chips are down, um, that that notion of resilience, something that we would help you to develop as well um, on, on the program. But um, but yeah, I think there's there's something about I think Cranfield MBA that sort of attract people who who sort of have a have a set of kind of you know those shared values. Um, Mario Mampinder, anything you you want to add? The quality. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think the best thing is definitely show your strengths in your application. Like this is I'm really good at, and then transition it. How you're gonna use this in making your career forward? You definitely need to be a bit clear on what exactly you want out of the MBA. So it's really good to show your short term and long term goals. How you're gonna utilize your entire year? Of course, you need to add your stories on resilience and how, uh, how you have coped with the situations that were difficult. Because 
MBA is also a, at the same time a difficult course and it's going to prepare you for the world coming ahead. So you definitely need to show share your stories on um, your success and definitely failures as well because no one is perfect. So, so be yourself with applications. Don't, don't try to be perfect. Like I've done everything perfectly because otherwise there's no point of getting to know new, new things. So go for every every bit of yourself. Show your power, power powerful side. Show your weaknesses as well and reflect on how you plan to improve and what you try to achieve after the MBA. I I will also only add about on your on your comments, Pinder. Uh, I'll I'll think also uh, like you were mentioning, you know, like the strengths and weaknesses you have, and also uh, what what uh, what are you like make you like a successful candidate, you know, like in terms of what are you bringing to the room at the end? Because as Leila was mentioning before, yeah, I mean you're like uh, being given all these resources, like these uh, amazing resources of the program, but at the end is how you manage those resources and how, uh, how you learn from each other as well. So you are in learning teams. You're also like this like uh, environment so dynamic. So at the end is like more also what are you going to learn of your classmates? So it's something that is really valuable. So what are you bringing to the table? Let's say like uh, what are you uh, offering? What are you willing to learn? What are you willing to, to learn from each other? So it's something really meaningful as well. Brilliant. Thanks, Mario. Good. Any any other questions from um, from anyone? If you want to come off mute or put your questions in the chat, um, Mampinda shared her LinkedIn um, contact. Thanks, Mampinda. So if you would like to kind of connect with her on LinkedIn. Yeah, so we have a question about the GMAT, um, 620 GMAT score. Um, I think we look at, I think when it comes to evaluation of applications, we look at a number of criteria. So we just, it's not like that, for example, we just focus on GMAT and then um, exclude, um, you know, the other qualities. For us, it's that kind of, we look for well-rounded individuals who can actually show a strength through different means and different different qualities. So I think we put a lot of value into the interview performance and how you kind of articulate yourself and your strengths and your vision and plan and everything that we just sort of discussed. Um, so GMAT score is, is, a, is a proxy and indication for critical thinking, but it's not the only thing that we kind of look at. So we look at the way that you put together the applications, your story, I think, is is really, really important. What's your story? How you connect your past to your future? What is the dream? Um, and um, and yeah, I think that those things are um, quite, quite important. And uh, there is a question about the post-study visa. So yes, if you if you study in the UK, if you study, um, if you complete your Cranfield MBA, you would be eligible to apply for a post-study graduate route visa. So when you complete the course officially in October, you can apply for the post-study visa. I think most of our students are in the process of renewing their, their visa. So you might get a sponsored job where you might not need to apply, but I think that the post-study visa is a scheme that kind of give you the reassurance that you are, you can stay in the UK without the need for sponsorship um, for, for two years, which is quite um, helpful. Um, so you need to be studying in the UK for one year. And that's why we've been very careful with the um, design of our international experience to for it to be framed as part of the Cranfield MBA so that you are allowed to leave the country for 30 days. Uh, but yeah, so be very much aware of the kind of the rules and regulations around the post-study visa. Uh, because that's very important to our audience and students, and we want to make sure that you um, you you get that. So yeah, it's pretty pretty straightforward.
Hi, this is Nick. Um, I know they're very different uh, objectives, but could you try and differentiate what you've just described for the Transformational MBA with something which is uh, perhaps more focused, which is the Strategic Marketing Masters? I, know, I realize they're very different, but could you describe how you would differentiate them? Of course. Um, so I think MBA is a general management degree, right? So if you want to sort of gain a specialized knowledge into a specific area, for example, marketing, as you said, or supply chain, um, I think those specialized master programs would give you that in a sense of providing you a comprehensive set of modules that you can kind of go deeper um, into, for example, the world of marketing. I think what MBA would give you is a platform to build leadership skills and um, and communication skills and sort of uh, being a good storyteller. And if you want to kind of, um, I think post MBA, usually people use the MBA as a chance to kind of go up the seniority ladder. If you want to sort of apply for a senior job, MBA can actually give you that pause uh, and a platform to sort of transition, but also a, a platform to kind of transition and switch industry. For example, we have many people who come from a different background. I had a student a, a few years ago who worked in Australian army for uh, for 16 years and he just wanted a ticket to the consulting or financial service world. And MBA actually gave him that platform because he used it as a chance to kind of build his network, but also learning how, which, which skills you can transfer. For example, the ability to work under pressure in an army context or the ability to deal with crisis resonated with the financial um, you know, services. And he he landed a VP job as at JP Morgan in London. So MBA would give you that, that bridge, that a story to transition, to switch functions. So for example, if you're tired of marketing and you want to move to finance, it would give you that opportunity to sort of build the skills and, and have that a story. If you do MSc in strategic marketing, you kind of making that decision for yourself at the start of the program that this is kind of the path that you want to sort of take and then you get more specialized. Um, so I would say from a personal development, leadership development piece, MBA would give you a more comprehensive set in terms of kind of aiming higher. But also I think the salary implication, uh, post MBA, three years after the MBA, the average salary is 120K based on the previous previous data. So I think you can kind of aim higher on the salary scale um, from, from that point of view, because that's kind of a degree that's kind of known within the within the employer's um and the, and the perception of the degree so um yeah so we had many people who kind of um triple jumped if you like changed country change function change industry um and and that's very important to us as well to support you to to achieve that um yeah i think the focus on career i would say and and personal development yeah, just just to add to that uh, through my personal experience uh mass msc marketing is definitely going to make you an expert in the topic uh but through mba for example uh, i've gone through finance operations strategy uh, entrepreneurship a lot of modules so the way in which we do the assignment and the projects it has made me a decision maker in those areas as well because as you climb up the corporate ladder, it's not going to be focused on just one uh, subject or let it be like marketing or finance. You have to make a collaborative decision on the other things as well. You have to consider finance operations, a lot of things in, the, in that sense. So MB is going to give you an overall knowledge of the subjects as well as how do you grow as a leader, combining all the things together. So I think that that's the difference it's going to make. Great, that's helpful. Thank you to you both. Yes. Brilliant. So thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for your interest. Thank you for all your good questions and engagement. Um, so please watch this space. So we planned more webinars in the new year where we kind of go deeper into one of each of the components that I explained earlier, for example, the career piece, but also some of the kind of the specialist uh, topics that we cover, such as sustainability um, and, and, and so on. So we have more, more webinars. Uh, and if you want to learn more, please book your one-to-one um, -one consultations with the team. Um, uh, and, um, and yeah, so we look forward to, uh, to engaging more with you and, and, and hopefully seeing you at Cranfield next September.